Ko mai ka mam sport man ne pi et matsi et matsi ska ko et matsi maga same man to ki mi ko ya ka kyo ki ko et matsi maga e ko ko man pi et matsi maga et matsi ska ko ya ka ni ka ska o so ska o to asim sa ni pi so so it ki ni ta o to ska o as ni pi e ko matsi o ni mi ko ya ni pi e ko sam sta he wa mai ya Tegi ki cei tama, he gai ki beto a ge a ki ni wa man pi, ni sis, au, ek smaka. My name is Nancy Waskiewicz, I'm from the Saddle Lake here. Okay, what I said in my language was, uh, is that uh, water is life. It brings life to human beings, because um, a baby, and what's in the mother's womb, is full of water, and it comes out with water. So that's life, you know. That's why we have to respect the water. Because, what can, are you going to die of thirst? Yeah, if you, don't, if you don't drink, you can die of thirst. So water is life. My name's Shane Whiskey Jack. I'm from Sad Lake Cree Nation. Uh, born and raised here. Uh, a little bit about my background. I'm a fourth class power engineer. I've been basically here for about three years now. I'm a level one treatment distribution and wastewater operator. Here, I'll just give you a, a brief schematics on how we treat our water. It's a chemical free process. Uh, this is our water treatment plant system schematics. Our source water is our lake itself. So we're using surface water here uh, because there's three, I believe three different types. There's surface water, there's groundwater, underground aquifers and basins. What we're running under surface water, so you're gonna notice a little bit more organics inside of the water, but our pre treatment process works wonders. Uh, how we start out, our source water comes into our raw water pump house, which it's, uh, we're roughly treating around seven liters a second. So that's roughly around 168,000 liters per day for distribution. Um, on our first process, the, we do not add any, any chemicals or coagulants. Uh, the only thing we add is compressed oxygen, which gives your molecule H2O2. Uh, basically, you are just adding the compressed oxygen into the system. The next process is our biofiltration tanks. Uh, it's built up with basic media coals. It's uh, broken down charcoals. It's uh, stuff from Norway. It works wonders. It just eats away at the bacteria so the bacteria doesn't grow. It's an Ibram system, integrated biometrical reverse osmosis, what we run here. After that biofiltration stage, the next process after that is the reverse osmosis membrane system. And that uh, roughly takes out all your TDS, any organics inside of your water. Then after that, it's uh, considered demineralized water. Uh, with that process, <coughs> uh, we add the minerals back into it. Uh, calcium, magnesium, Cro6 calcite. Uh, with that stage, it brings up your conductivity in your water because, uh, and also your pH, your power hydrogen, because anything below seven is considered acidic. Uh, Health Canada makes us abide by having chlorine in our water, just in our water mains, uh, just to do for any disinfectant or prevent any contamination of infiltration of the line, say if we have a break or anything goes along. Uh, then it goes into a bath, uh, close chlorine injection points. Then it goes into our three-stage reservoir, uh, which it has a baffling system. So it runs out and it channels through and it eventually ends up into our clear well, into our distribution. I have my responsibility as an operator is to make sure the water quality is there, the amount, the volume that we're consuming, the amount we're treating, and also the amount that is going into our local reservoir located at the pump house in our community. Uh, that's the main basic central ones that we have to keep going. Uh, my name is Ken Arge. I work with Satellite Cree Nation, uh, Public Works Director, Housing Manager. So, and we now have probably most like about 490 homes that are truck water. You know, we do have uh, 11 water, water trucks that do deliver, but uh, out of the 11, six are constantly on the go. So, you know, we just, uh, there's so many maintenance, high maintenance in those water trucks that 
constantly going down, or that's why it's like it's almost like two water trucks per driver. I think 90 of the homes in our community are actually on the water line. And then the rest of the businesses, so the rest are all trucked out. You know, and uh, we do have a lot of issues. I know roads is an issue in our community. Driveways is always an issue. We get funding for roads, but we never get enough funding for driveways. So that's, uh, you know, getting to the tanks, you know. Because of where some of the houses were placed years ago in the 70s and 80s, like they're long driveways, and they were never built to the specs. They're just, I see something out there that were probably original wagon trail, you know, that they still access today. You know, so it's, uh, it's always an issue, especially once we get uh, rainy season, you know, that uh, it's hard getting uh, water to the community members. Well, they cracked, you know, get contaminated. You know, lids crack, collars crack, so I'm constantly getting Health Canada reports, you know. We have to put them under a bowl of water, advise we get them cleaned out. Just so there's always an expense to the nation each year. As soon as we get a Health Canada report, we're on it, they're cleaning the tanks, but sometimes that doesn't always help. So there's always the maintenance of the collars and the uh, it's there that I was an issue too. My name is Roland White. Uh, my title in my community is I'm a community water monitor and my role there is um, making sure that the, all the necessary areas that that have to deal with water are safe. That means um, I sample the water trucks on a month, monthly basis, the houses on a yearly basis, and all the cisterns and all the water line on a weekly basis. A lot of a lot of our community members are are still not convinced that the water that they that they have in their cisterns is safe because of the lack of maintenance. I visit other communities in Saskatchewan, Alberta, there, one community there, they have uh, 800 homes. And uh, out of the 800 plus homes, there's only maybe 14 or 15 at that time that they deliver water to. So how did they manage to get a high pressure water line to other houses? You know, uh, we're about the same size of the nation. You know, we don't have it on our homes in our community, but you're still, population-wise, we are about the same size. So how do they, how come they can do it and we can't? You know, it's not only can we water the houses, but how is it going to help, help with the roads, the conditions of our roads? You know, like, uh, our roads are so beat up, uh, you know, sheer out in the rural counties, Township roads and range roads, you get three, four houses. As for us in the nation, you got 20, 30 homes with three or four vehicles there. So our roads take a lot more traffic than uh, the county roads. So why are they so beat up? You got your water trucks, you got your school buses, your garbage trucks, you know, and that's why roads take a pounding. Like water is life. So how do we protect the surroundings of the lake? No, so you can tell us, I know other communities, it's ground source water, wells. And ours is actually water from the lake, so what do we need to do to protect our, our life?
My name is Oliver Britton from Sand Lake. Back in the 40s and early 50s, Sand Lake had plenty of water. It had fresh fish in there. They had a lot of white fish. Local people would go and fish there and they would barter the fish. They'd come to our house just a little bit by Sugar Town and uh, my dad would give him tea or something and then we'd get to eat some fish. And there was plenty of water back then. Uh, the creeks were running full speed year round. There was plenty of water. And also there was not too many bridges, so we had to cross on, on a team of horses like in the rivers. But they weren't really that deep, but still there was a lot of water. Um, in the community as a whole, I think we depended on uh, a lot of it was from the lake, the creeks, and the sluice. Like, you know, and in, in the winter time, we depended on the ice and the snow. And um, a lot, a lot of people depended on wells too, but there wasn't that many because they were all homemade. Like there were springs like that come out from the ground. Because that's one of them was uh, where my grandparents, they, they had a spring that came out from the ground. Uh, and they would dig that spring up and put uh, boards right around. Very tasty, you know, very tasty water, very cold uh, and clear water. That's how uh, us people depended on water, was through rivers, uh, creeks, snow, um, ponds. You know, you, you go all over. Water was clear. Water was clean. Now you're mine until the end of time. But what I'm seeing in the last two, three years, I've been here, uh, the water has risen here at the lake at least by seven feet. When I first started, it was around 13 to 15 feet. I took a measurement in last October. We're sitting around 21 to about 24 feet on the intake. So it just shows uh, water starting to come back. In my opinion, my quality of water, I believe, exceeds anything, uh, not only Canadian standards, I believe global standards. Uh, everybody has their pros and cons to the water they drink. Uh, I would prefer that anywhere I go, I take my water with me. Uh, that's just by my standards, because I test my water four times a week, so I know what's inside my water and what I treat. What I believe of sustaining it for the future is to educate our youth, even educate people around my age, middle age, in order to sustain our source water here. I believe in preserving everything for the future and uh, not only for myself, my kids, for my cousins, for my family. I have a sense of pride when I go around the lake and to see all the water coming back, it gives me a sense of I'm doing my job right, I'm working with the community, I'm talking with the right people, not only just our youth, my colleagues, I'm also talking a lot with the elders. It's how you treat the lake before you treat it. What I notice, it's starting to come back. I notice my fish, my wildlife are starting to come back. For you kids out there, I believe this is going to be our future. They're going to be calling us for us in the next 10 years. What's our plan on moving forward? You know, to get that kind of money and, uh, you know, we need a plan in place. How do we make this work? How come other nations can do it and we can't? Yet we have the lake, we have the water, you know. You know, how's it, uh, you got to think long term, like the roads. You know, how does this all affect one, one another? kind of has a domino effect on all the other departments too. So, you know, we need to come up with a plan to try to get this plan moving forward. My community, to me, as a young man growing growing up to where we are today, um, not having running water, um, having to use the, the, the 
washroom and, the, uh, and go outside, used the washroom to where we are today. I'm very proud that we come a long ways and in different areas of uh, water, um, housing, and, and other, other projects in our community. And, and we still have a long ways to go. But I, but I feel one of the things about my community is that we're coming together to make a difference and that's what uh, makes me proud of my community. Yeah.